talk about the trade union officials. I don't normally think of President Trump or his administration as being big supporters of organized labor. What is this all about? They're not supporters of organized labor, but they frequently say they are supporters of the workers. Now, some of the top uh, labor groups in the country and their leaders are gathered in the White House right now, including Richard Trumka of the AFL-CIO, as well as uh, representatives from the UAW, Teamsters, uh, and Workers of America, United Steelworkers of America. I spoke with a source who uh, was working to put together this meeting, David, who said that infrastructure, one of the key key issues expected to come up here, also particularly some environmental protections, but we don't have a readout as of now. Uh, but for President Trump to be taking this meeting is again a sign that, look, these top labor bosses aren't in agreement with this administration, but they are, uh, in, but it's indicative rather of their members, who many of which were the voters of his in key states like Pennsylvania and Wisconsin and Michigan. And Kevin, what are the chances that, they, that the president might be looking for a little support on some of his trade actions? Because that is a place that maybe there is a true intersection between organized labor often and this administration. So I put that question uh, to this very same source, David, who told me essentially that on the issue of NAFTA, which now appears to be ending its renegotiations as well as to have uh, the United States not withdrawing from it, uh, another potential uh, topic to come up. But the issue becomes what significant changes or alterations would be made to it. And you're absolutely right, particularly uh, with steel. Uh, you could see uh, a situation where the president's looking to get some type of, of, uh, of coalition a co of, of uh, support, rather, from these groups. But what they're expecting to get out of him, we just don't know yet. And Kevin, President Trump also busy with a gun control debate. He has just signed a memorandum against bump stocks that allow semi-automatic rifles to be fired more rapidly. How will this sit with his party and his base? Well, I don't know if you can hear it, but behind me, uh, hundreds of student protesters gathering outside of the White House, uh, protesting against gun violence. Of course, it comes as uh, this is the latest mass shooting in America to grip American consciousness. The president calling for a ban on bump stocks. It also comes at a time, however, in which, as you noted, uh, many in his base uh, are supporters of the NRA, which is a key political advocacy group that has funded several prominent Republican races, including in the last cycle, several million dollars, about $3 million, according to FEC filings, to Senator Marco Rubio, the Republican from Florida. So uh, the ban on that is one, on the bump stock is one issue. The other two points I'd quickly note are the bipartisan plan put forward after the Sandy Hook massacre by Senators Pat Toomey, a Republican, and Joe Manchin, a Democrat, with the regards to mental health. And then the third point is actually funding the, the regulators at the state and federal level to enforce the laws on the books, including funding how to maintain the national background check system, which has been inadequately funded and seen a decline in funding over mm. the past decade. And background checks also for security clearances at the yeah. White House. We know that uh, Chief of Staff uh, General Kelly has ordered an overhaul, and we are hearing that there could be some problems with Jared Kushner. Well, Jared Kushner has not received uh, security clearances since he has joined this administration, uh, and that would put him at odds with Chief of Staff General Kelly, who, that said, has released a public statement saying uh, that, that he does not anticipate his policy to in any way influence what Jared Kushner is doing with regards to the Middle East peace process or his other roles in the administration. However, what the Rob Porter incident the other week highlighted was the discrepancy in the national security clearance issue, as well as exacerbated uh, and brought to the forefront a division between Chief of Staff Kelly, as well as other members in the administration, including General McMaster.